Everything is recorded. Okay. We're good to go. Uh, should I introduce you? No, it's fine. Hello. You hear me? Hello. Good morning. I forgot it in, in Italian. What's it good morning in Italian? Buongiorno. Good morning. Thanks for coming. I am Matthias uh, here. Matthias. Uh, I work at Uber. Today I'm going to talk about how we use it at Uber. I'm very honored and really surprised that, that guys told, like, let me talk on stage. The only non-ZSF uh, presenter. So I'm really humbled for that. Thank you. Uh, a, bit, a bit about me. I'll do a very short demo inspired by Frank, uh, which is not going to be computer science related. I'm Matthias. I've been at Uber for a bit more than six years now. I joined Uber when my first son was two weeks old, so that's pretty easy to remember. I've been an Erlang developer for most of my pre-Uber days and a sysadmin, and I'm also a cartographer, uh, officially, I guess. And I'm going to do a very quick demo on cartography about me. Uh, the wrong, wrong window. Here, this is my summer house. This is the town of my summer house. Uh, it's, it's photographed from the plane. And this is the national, uh, this, is, this is the aerial photo that you can see, like made, made by Lithuanian government. I think Bing Maps uses that too. And there is here, this is, this is it. Like, and this is my place. And I wanted to make a map of it, but this, is, this resolution is not great, you can see. So I made a different art of photography, like I made, I, I captured, I pictured the whole area, two square kilometers, with my cheap consumer drone. Uh, this is how it looks like. This is mine. Uh, 20 missions, 700, sorry, 1700 photos, about 10 hours of labor outside. <laughs> and even more labor inside to stitch them together and make this happen. And this is the result. Uh, this is my summer house. This is my car. I'm uh, right now, like right when this photo is taken, this is like a place to hide from the sun. So I'm sitting right there behind the roof. And this is it, 80 meters high, cheap drone. Getting back to the original one. And uh, you can see it makes, uh, when you make any map, you usually, 99% of the time, you start with an, a photography. And then you write your vectors. You draw your vectors and then you do the styling. So it was quite a bit easier to do, to use this. And this is the same all over the place. This is a, this is a wonderful church that I attend to on Sundays when I'm there. It's a bit messed up, but it's still like pretty. So that's it, that's about me. Uh, getting <laughs> thank you. A little bit about my company, Uber. Uh, we, it started in 2010. It has done uh, over 15 billion trips uh, by now, and we made uh, quite a lot of a lot and cool and innovative tech, innovative tech to make it happen. To make it happen, those all those trips. Uh, it's a few thousand engineers. Uh, it's pretty big. Uh, primarily Go and Java. Uh, I'm in. Uh, this is Go and Java is a company-wide mandate or direction, depending how you want to how you see the world. Uh, I am in infrastructure. Most of the interest, like probably all of the infrastructure code, is uh, written in Go. So I'm I've been a Go developer since for the last six years. Uh, rare, ex rare exceptions exist for uh, except like non-Go and Java. Uh, so these are like sometimes like very niche cases where you need C++, for example. But uh, these are very rare. And we have a monorepo per language. So we have currently four monorepos. Go monorepo is the biggest one because the, all the infrastructure is running on Go. And quite a lot of the business applications are running on Go. Uh, the Go monorepos uh, get status on a very powerful app, like where a powerful machine takes about a second. It is about an order of magnitude bigger in terms of number of lines and files than the Linux kernel. So you can imagine the size of the code that we're operating. And it's only the Go monorepo. So that's a lot of code and a lot of moving parts inside that monorepo. So that's about Uber, very briefly. Uh, how does Uber use Zig? Well, this is what we're going to find out, but apparently it's, it's very easy to find out very quickly. 
Uh, when, I, when we agreed with Loris that I'm going to do this talk, uh, he tweeted, and within an hour in our engineering channel, as you can see in the, in the top, uh, this was shared. <laughs> Turns out we have had a Zig channel internally for over a year. <laughs> and I was not aware of it. <laughs> so, I, so this was flagged and there was a thread internally. And uh, my colleague uh, Abinav uh, kind of summarized how we do use Uber. How, how, how we do use Zig at Uber. And this is the next slide. So read it and we'll dissect it. This is pretty cool. Like This is the TLDR. We're using the Zix toolchain only, not the language. It's not fully rolled out. It will enable cross-compilation of C-based code. And CGO. Uh, CGO is the, the C. You can write C extensions to Go and then compile them to the same binary. Uh, so this is called CGO and we, we, we do a lot of it. And the Zig toolchain will drop the, de the dependency on the system C compiler. This is how we use it. Right? Okay, any questions? <laughs> okay, so I could finish this talk. Like, I would satisfy the title, uh, but uh, you probably want to know a bit more behind that, how that happened. So I, initially, the, the title was uh, how, we, how Uber onboarded to, uh, to, to Zig, and that would be more accurate in terms of the time about the talk. So we'll talk about that now. Why we need, that's, that's, that, that's gonna be in a few like stages. Why we, we think we need Zig and why we need it. How we onboard, what the, what the process looked like in, our, in such an organization with such a tech stack. And what does the future look like the way I see it now. Uh, <clears throat> so let's, let's start with the beginning. Uh, Uber was not a monorepo company all the time. The monorepo appeared in, in 2018. So that was already two, three years while I was there. We started with micro repos. And then there was, then everything started moving to the monorepo and the Go monorepo was the first monorepo. In 2019, when a few hundred services were onboarded, uh, this task was created internally. Uh, we, the monorepo since the very beginning had its own Go toolchain. So the monorepo configures the Go toolchain and downloads it. So wherever you run our code, it will use the same Go version, uh, but it will use the, the, the C++ compiler of the host. So it is not hermetic. A hermetic toolchain means that is, a hermetic compilation means it does not require anything on the host. Everything is configured, all the dependencies, all the compilers, all the tools are in the same repository. That means it doesn't matter really on which host you are running it on and on which distribution you're running it on, if it's Linux and etc. So Go is hermetic since the very beginning. C++ is not hermetic. So whatever it finds on the host, it will use. It will use Clang on uh, Linux. Oh, sorry. It will use Clang on Darwin, on uh, Mac OS. It will use whatever GCC version it finds when it's on Linux, and it will complain if there is no GCC on Linux. This is very problematic when, uh, well, for many reasons, among others is that we have to stick, well, one of the, well, at least one thing, we cannot upgrade the compiler, for example. We cannot rely on new features because there's still, there's always still something using like an older distribution. So there are many problems with that, but nobody, nobody really, it was not painful enough for anybody to pick up, and this was not something we can solve quickly. Uh, using, who, who knows, who has heard of Bazel, by the way? Oh, that's quite a lot. That's, that's surprising. So using Go with Go, Hermetic Go toolchain, Hermetic Go toolchain, just for Go, with Bazel is very easy. It's, it's the default. If you use rules Go, that's what you get. But configuring C++ is, is hard. Like there is, it's, I don't know why, but the ecosystem for Hermetic C++ compilers is just not there. So nobody really seriously picked it up because the investment is significant and there was no big pain point. Uh, so for, for over two years, uh, January 2021. 20, so one thing happened, I had a, a second child in January and I went for a three month long paternity leave. And just at the beginning of the paternity leave, I found this. Uh, it was not new at that time, but uh, this is how, you know, I found this compiler. 
and started messing around. I compiled, the first thing I tried to compile was, I think, XZ, the, the compressor and decompressor. And I immediately hit some, probably, un, or either undefined behavior or it was missing like a linker or something, so it didn't work. But some things worked, like SQLite worked out of the box and I was amazed because that's a huge project and some other things worked. And I, I started, I, I was messing around, I was compiling different things. Uh, and I started, this was for personal use, like curiosity and not job. Like I, I was on my paternity leave, I had a baby, I had my master thesis, the cartography master thesis to do, so I, it's not work. I reported bugs, uh, those bugs that I found, nothing happened for a while. Then I started, okay, maybe I need to do the donations. I started donating, <laughs> maybe something will happen. You can see where this is going now. And nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, like, okay, I was, I was expecting attention, I didn't have any. Okay, so where's my attention? I asked for attention. So here's the <laughs> IRC log. <laughs> my, I, this was my first or second uh, IRC entry. And uh, I asked, like, how do I, you know, how do I guys make you work on what's important to me? And he said, you don't. <laughs> So I, 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 yeah, I wanted to dig a hole and then hide there. It was really, really, really shameful. But now looking back, it's, it's really funny. <laughs> okay, so nothing, nothing I could do. Like basically I reported those bugs. I was messing, you know, but it was just sitting there. And, uh, but I, it was still on my mind. Like we have this problem in, in, in my job. We don't have a hermetic tool chain and there is nothing really to base it on. Uh, but we were lit, but, uh, and there's Zig, which can cross compile things. It's small, you know, it's awesome. The, the, the blog post is great. Like it's, it's a really good piece. And, but the missing part was the glue between Bazel and Zig. So configuring a C++ toolchain in Zig is not a small feat. I tried, I failed. Uh, I, I went on to do my thesis instead, which I, you know, maybe, maybe a good thing. And then in June, Adam, uh, created a very proof of concept Bazel Zig CC. So a, a, a Bazel and a Zig wrapper, which enables the hermetic tool chain using Zig CC. I was like, wow, this is, it was still missing a lot of things, but the, in principle it worked. For example, the, the, the very first version, because Zig did not AR, the archive, what is, what is that? AR, the, the command which, you know, archiver. <laughs> Uh, so it was it was downloading the whole LLVM stuff like the whole half a gigabyte thing just for Zig for to use the LLVMs AR, but for everything else it was using uh, Zig CC, and this was cool. Then I reported immediately like we we need Zig AR, and then uh, maybe I tried that myself. I spent quite some time trying that, and I failed. I I, I was not. You know, I, I failed to implement that, but it wasn't. Andrew kept telling me it's like not hard, but I failed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then Jakob went and implemented it for some reason. <laughs> so thank you, Jakob. You, you, you were saying, yeah? Well, you did. I can point you, like you did. And I was, I was surprised. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I integrate like the same day. I integrated Zig AR. I stopped downloading uh, the LLVM. How do I even call that? Tarball? Yeah, but like huge. Tarball is doesn't mean it's huge. Like, blah, the LLVM thing. Behemoth. Sorry. Behemoth. Be behemoth. Yeah, behemoth. Uh, then I and then I immediately announced it. Like it's. It's, it's somewhat usable. Like I, I was by now I was able to use it for my project, my, my small project. The, this basil and the glue and so n n here here's here's it works it it has bugs there there are like there's like ten bugs uh, the, later in the email I try to get it like I sneakily try to get their attention like okay here's what's blocking me from adopting it more so I listed some of the annoying bugs but the announcement was out like the word is out and the tool chain kind of works so I was in the position where I had the glue uh, for you know Zig and basil so. Do you have a do you have a recap? No. Okay. So next we'll have a recap soon. So we have I have this glue and basil zig glue, and I have our company Monorepo. My paternity leave is over at that time, so I'm 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 working again. 
I created a, a diff, uh, a pull request internally, which would just dump, dump pick the toolchain and use it and try to compile uh, our code. Uh, almost all of the tests failed by that time, which was expected because uh, there were too, too many assumptions, other assumptions like non-hermetic, foundational non-hermetic libraries that we depend upon uh, and etc. There were many problems, but I created this on July 1st and it was sitting there. So our, our status uh, was we had ZigCC, like this amazing toolchain compiler, which can, which can do what we want. I had a working integration uh, written by Adam and then improved by me. And then I had a diff, like a, a diff I can show to others in our monorepo. But again, the diff is up, but the, 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 the original problem is still there. Nobody really needs it. There is still a lot of work to fix all those tests, to, to redo, to undo the technical depth that we have acquired, to redo, remove the dependency on, uh, on you know, these, these host libraries. There's a lot of work. I, I thought it's, it's, it's like six to 12 months of man, like six to 12 man hours, man, man, man no, six to 12 man months, person months. And there is no interest because there was no, still there was no business need really to you know even though some kind of integration was there but it, it was not you know nobody really cared except for me i would when some issue were, would, get, would get fixed that happened like uh, once a month i would update this diff update the zig cc version and then yeah I, I don't even know what maybe some like less test would would fail or something but like it it, it was not making progress at all I kept maintaining the diff sometimes, like when, when, oh, when the issue would be fixed. I would just update the version and that's it. But I knew that there's a lot of work uh, if we ever want to merge this. <clears throat> so to recap, all what I just said so far, beyond my introduction, of course. Uber needs a hermetic C++ cross comp Uber needs a hermetic C++ compiler. Cross compiler was not even necessary by the time, but won't fund it because it does not really need it. Like the task is up, but you know, it, it was, there was no like clear case like why do we need to invest into this compared to all the other infra work that we have to do. Uh, Zix, Basil ZixCC works for toy projects. For my project it worked, but nowhere near real use. Uh, there were some bugs in ZixCC which you cannot, you, ju you just cannot ship all, on larger scale. Like there were some race conditions with, with compiling stuff. But like for me, it's fine because it just can rerun the command, but it's not fine for, for, a, for a repository like this. And ZigCC also had bugs or missing features that were reported. And rightfully, it was not in, in the ZSFs and, and core contributors' uh, priority. Some things were, some things got fixed, like I said, which I, which I really like and love and appreciate, but we, we don't have the same goals. Like the, the Z, ZSF and Uber, like we want one things, but you know, Zig guys wanted to release 0.9 at that time a lot, like badly. And we, we don't, like the, our priorities don't really align. So I can't, even if I want to push this at Uber, like try to get it done, there is no way to say that, yeah, this works and this will work. So we had, we had this problem too. Donations don't help, as, as you can see, as some of you may naively also imagine. And I can't realistically implement them. I tried with ZigAR, which is you know, seemingly a simple feature. I, I wasn't able to. Uh, so I, and also I have a day job, you know, I have a family. There's, there's only so much I can, I can do. And yeah, to, and there's uh, too much stuff in our, on our side like to, 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 to push it on my own, especially also that I'm not on the monorepo team. Like it's not my job. The hermetic compiler is not my job. It's just hell annoying not to have it. But it's not my job. It's not my team. Mm. So what happened? Um, at the end of 2021, my director reached out to me and then asked, give me a project uh, to evaluate ARM servers uh, for our production stack. I was, ooh. <laughs> we have a business case. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I said, like the first thing, we need a cross compiler. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then things started coming into place. Uh, there was a team, like there, we're three now, me, myself, and two more engineers. 
Uh, there's time, like we're, we have about a year, give or take, for this project. Uh, and money, of course. Like there is an organizational, real organizational strategic, this is a strategic R&D. Like we don't know whether we will run ARM or not, but we will spend some engineering time, some engineering hours to figure it out. For that, there are prerequisites. So like I need a cross compiler and here's a diff. Um, but that was not, but that was not it. Like that was not it. Like that, that was not enough. That was just the beginning. Like, okay, now I have a business case, which, which kind of started to move things, but is like, I was talking to the monorepo team a lot by the time. Uh, so ZixCC may work. They were kind of happy that, okay, we have now two suggestions. There's one suggestion. There's another Bazel toolchain, which is based, Bazel C++ toolchain, which is based on uh, vanilla LLVM, which is a huge, huge blob, this 500 megabyte thing, which is shipping the whole LLVM stack. And there is mine, which is using ZixCC. And no, onboarding ZixCC was, at that time, like, the monorepo team, uh, they're maintaining the Go monorepo and they will be maintaining it for as long as there is Uber. They're looking at the long term, like they're always evaluating crit critical dependencies. How risky is that? And it is risky. ZixCC both has bugs, known bugs, which I found. And it's a very new thing. It's not even like 1.0. Like <laughs> I, I got asked this question a lot, like the same question Loris gets asked. Who else is using Zig? I don't know, my project, <laughs> my personal project, nobody. But, you know, but so th there are two things. I, we need to offset the risk somehow. We need to de-risk it. If I want to go for Bazel ZixCC, we need to de-risk it. Um, and of course, fix bugs. So there are two major problems at this point. How do I convince others that, okay, there is a risk, but we can mitigate it? Uh, second thing, why is, why is it better? <clears throat> so I... In some uh, st strange evening, I don't know, I, so my donation failed, the $50 donation failed, but maybe a bigger money injection could work. <laughs> <laughs> so because we had the time uh, and the budget, I asked my dire the same director, can we, you know, there's, there's this tool chain, uh, maybe we can hire somebody to fix the bugs that we know about and then de-risk this part because there are technical advantages over the the toolchain that i told you before not on, not only size and he said well how much is that going to cost well we talked like fig go figure out uh like what are they even open it so i i reached out to andrew he redirected me to loris and we chatted with loris and we figured out that it's acceptable we can we can work with this and the money that that would be necessary is acceptable on our side. So that's kind of cool. Like we, we had that budget, we could commit it. So I was able, we had a contract that we negotiated, we, negotiate, we, we worked on a contract that would, uh, like we would, so we would, uh, we were, okay, we had a contract where we would pay for prioritizing our issues on ZixCC. We had a few known ones, so some of them were like big, like days of work for Andrew. So that imagine, you know, it's huge. Uh, and we, we wanted to fix those first, but we wanted to have some time while we are onboarding to it. If we find new bugs, we would, we would have a channel and like a, a reasonable SLA to get it fixed. So that worked on all sides, which I'm very happy about. Uh, and there were, there were many other discussions whether it's, a, like I said, whether it's a good fit at all, like risk-wise and feature-wise. Um, this almost failed at one point, like there was a very sad evening when I emailed Loris that, that this might not, you know, we were almost, we have almost signed the contract, but the, the, the monorepo team like almost bailed. And you, pro you may remember that email. <laughs> I was, but I, you know, I kept professional, Loris kept professional, so all good. <laughs> Uh, but then, in the end, they evaluated the ZixCC, my prototype internally, and uh, this thing won the argument. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, so it feels so good now. 
so this is the, the result of the contract. We, we transferred $52,000 for some support throughout this year. And this has been, on our side, this has been very successful. We, we have reported a few things and they have been fixed. So thank you for that. This is great. This allows us to move on internally. Uh, also, the diff was landed, the, the my diff that I started in July 2021 was landed in February, uh, which optionally enables uh, Zig CC if you, if, you, if you put it a flag to Bazel. Minus minus config equals hermetic CC. So it will compile all the C and C++ stuff uh, with Zig. So it is, that was like a first, like a big win for me because it was there in code, like in, in, in master, in main. Uh, and I'm, I'm able to like see what works, what doesn't work, like go from there, run tests. And uh, also at this time, the monorepo team for the cross compilation use case, we asked, like there's a process to ask something from a different team. Uh, we officially asked for supporting the cross compiler, whatever it is. They, and they promised to commit some resources for that. So there's a person full time working on undoing our technical debt to make this a default now in, in another team. So this is, this is it. Uh, our current status is, this is still optional as you, as you saw in, on, the two, on, this, on the thread. <coughs> Excuse me. We, we're working on tooling for compiling with ZigCC. There's some tooling necessary. And we, I just realized yesterday that we shipped our first binary to production that was compiled with ZigCC. <laughs> that was, yeah, it's, thank you. That was yesterday. That was, no, that was, that was on Friday. Uh, so that was the first one. Uh, and we will be, so what, what excuse me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we do test before we should. deploying Zig in production on a Friday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's still Uber, you know. So we, well, okay, what I meant by that, it was Friday morning, uh, European time. So it's, it's fine. Until Friday, until lunch, we're, we're still okay to deploy. <laughs> so what, what's next? Uh, over the next weeks or a small, this is assuming nothing changes, which can happen. I mean, things have happened with plan changes, but if things go as, as I see them now, this is what we're going to do. We'll enable it by default for all builds within large number of weeks or small number of months, like, I don't know, two or three months. Uh, because there are two major issues remaining uh, for, for depending on system libraries and they're hard. Uh, then the next, so once, that, once it's enabled, we will tag Bazel ZigCC 1.0. We'll say, okay, we use it. We will move, currently Bazel ZigCC is on source hut in my personal repo, open source. We will move it to github.com slash Uber, and then it will be an officially Uber's project. I will maintain one project less. Uh, so we'll tag 1.0. Um, I'll start, I promised Loris to write a blog post about how Uber uses Zig, and this is what I'm going to write. Well, some of it, what I'm talking about here, but like, it's going to be like kind of an announcement to Bazel Zig CC. Okay, this is, we're using it. Yeah, and then work on enabling the, the Mac OS targets. So currently, it's pretty painful uh, to run on, you know, it's not painful, but when you have thousands of engineers uh, developing something which requires uh, a C compiler, they would, they, it needs Xcode, like it needs to download Xcode and it needs to do that with every, sometimes even patch upgrade, like it needs to re-download Xcode and that's annoying, that sometimes fails that's prompting for things and sometimes the UX gets, you know, whatever, the Apple UI doesn't always work. Um, so it is not convenient and there's quite a lot of support burden for the monorepo team for OSX development. So the next part, once the Linux part is done, we will move on to OSX. So our goal is to have hermetic toolchain for both Linux and Mac. This will also allow us to compile 
uh, binaries on to cross compile binaries on Linux to Darwin uh, because sometimes we really need Seagull and we don't have a, a, a compiler fleet, a Mac OS compiler fleet. So this will be a very big milestone like in the developer experience. The, the Goman repo team really like cares about it and there was just nothing there until until Zixis. You you had to use the host compiler, the well the host linker at least. And now you don't. So I'm really looking forward when this will be a thing. So I, I if like like I said, if the plan is the same, maybe like by the end of this year. Something like that. <clears throat> okay, how could this have failed many ways? But uh, I'll talk about that quickly, but I just remember there are actually other companies who are using Bazel ZigCC and therefore Zig, which are for some reason private. They're private. They're emailing privately, and there are, and then commenting on GitHub issues sometimes. But the one, the biggest one is Cloudflare, and they use it internally quite a lot apparently, even more than Uber, and in production too. They like I got an email from Cloud from an engineer in Cloudflare like. Thanks for Bazel 6 to see. It's awesome. We've been using this for the last few months. It's been working great. All right. It hasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I, I was, I got a Google, Google awarded me, awarded me. There's a Google peer open source peer bonus award where they send you $250 for an open source contribution. So I got that for Bazel 6 c Thanks, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because they, there's at, they're at least uh, working. So there is a optional support for Bazel 6 c in Envoy. So if you look at the Envoy source, you can also enable it the same way that I've enabled it for our monorepo. Uh, and this is how we learned about it. Like there are, Andrew also knows, like they, they find issues and they comment and then, and then you know, we, so. It's, it's at least used by some capacity at Google and by sig apparently significant capacity at Cloudflare and also by some capacity at Uber now. So this is the state of the world today. How could this have failed, like the fun stuff? Uh, if I wouldn't have been annoyed enough with the status quo, like this, this cross compiler task was like on my mind for a long time and it was, I've been, I'm working on so, such components where cross compiler is, is just necessary and it's really annoying. I wouldn't have found Andrew's post about the universal compiler, the one that I showed in the beginning. If I wouldn't have known that ZigCC exists, this wouldn't have happened, or not in, not in such a way. So lessons learned, make sure you're visible. Good job to you both. You are, you are findable and visible. Uh, the, like I mentioned, the product, the, the ZigCC, were, if there, it were not much better by the competition, we would have gone with the safe route. So in this case, the specifying the glibc version, I didn't mention that that's really important for us also, uh, for other reasons, but also, uh, but also the Darwin cross compiler that won the argument. It won the argument because that's the Go Mono repo team. This is what they care about. We care, I care about the glibc version more than the Darwin. As far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't work on, like I don't need the Darwin stuff, me, because I don't, I don't have, a, well, I don't work on a Mac myself, and I'm maintaining Linux fleet. So I don't need that, but the Go Mono repo needs that. So there, there's also like different interests there. Uh, my interest was glibc version and the compiler version, which is like spot on for, with ZigCC. Uh, megabytes, the size of the thing, it's nice to have. Engineers like small things. And it's like also always like a nice, you know, cherry on the cake. Like everyone appreciates that when it's like 40 megabytes only instead of like hundreds. Uh, yeah, the demonstrable cross compiler for OS X. We talked about this here. There are some. There's some more tooling remaining to make it easy. To, there's some more tooling remaining to do to make it easy to cross compile to Darwin on Bazel. Uh, we'll work on that as part of the the later project. But it's, it is it is it it like I was able as part of the con, you know the the talking process. I was able to compile a Go binary to to Linux, to Darwin AMD64 and get it to run in a Zoom call. And that was like huge. So that was, it, it like that, that was, you know, the tipping point. Uh, and also the teams and my director did not trust me as much as they did. Uh, I've been here for a while. I, there's some reputation with, with time. 
And also the budget thing is fun because the timing was right. Because this is something that, that may not have been always possible. We, we just had the budget at that time. I won't go into details <laughs> though. And also this also relied heavily on Andrew signing the contract. He, you guys said yes. If you wouldn't have said yes, we would not be able to de-risk it. Therefore, it would be, have been, it could have been very different. And also my preparation, uh, yeah, I, I did, I spent stupid amount of time working on this without, without knowing that there's something on it, like there's something behind it. I, it was, I was annoyed enough with the status quo that I just spent my personal time, but that's also rare. And it's, you know, I think a luck thing that, that there was a preparation and well, we actually needed that thing later. Like the, the business case came, when the business case came, there was something I could show. And the time was already tight when, when the business case came. Like I wouldn't have created the Zig toolchain after my director would have asked me to do the ARM thing. So to summary, like it's, as you can see, this is luck and timing. I, I really wanna, I, I, was, I was hoping to tell you, okay, how, how can you onboard Zig to the company? Like, I guess this is what you wanna know here most. I don't have a good answer for you. Unfortunately, it's in my case, it's luck. You know, uh, lots of luck and, and more luck and some work. Um, yeah, so prep, like <laughs> TLDR of the, whole, of the whole talk. So preparation was crucial. Uh, timing and luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Yeah.